Hey everybody, this is Will with Slices Concessions and I'm here today to talk to you about the Flavor Burst Syrup Flavoring System. Now there's many different models of the Flavor Burst and today we're here to talk about the TS80SS. The TS80SS is a add-on unit that can be applied to Crown Series Taylor machines as well as non- Crown Series Taylor machines with the use of an auxiliary finger trigger. So today I'm going to go over all of the components, how to put them together, how to prime up a bag of syrup, how to attach the unit to a machine, and how to pull a cone. And then we're going to cover also how to flush out the system to clean it out for the end of the day. So this, this video will be a little bit longer. Uh, there might be some things that I have to go back over, but uh, bear with me and we'll get through this. All right. So your flavor burst is consisting of multiple different components. Down here you have your syrup dispenser lines with fitting head. This is the majority of your electronic controls. You will have a touch screen of some sort. This is the non-color touch screen. And you will also have several connections coming off of it. This round plug with these many holes. You will have what looks to be a headphone jack. And then a two-prong connector. You will have the actual tower itself. This is the mounting bracket for attaching your control panel to the machine. This one currently does not have the adhesive backing. We're going to replace that with some double-sided tape for mounting for when you receive it. This is the cartridge that the motor and dispenser uh, fitting fit onto, and that's what actually mixes the product up. This is the finger trigger. This is for the non-crown machines, and I'll cover that later. This is the spinner motor. This is the hanger bracket for the cartridge. This is a piece of the cartridge with your star cap and your, your flavor dispenser spinner in there. You've got this piece which sits in between. And uh, I'd also like to note that this has not been uh, thoroughly cleaned. We were using this earlier, so there's some, still some stuff in there. I'm sorry about that. But this is where the syrup actually shoots through to mix into the ice cream as it's dispensed before it gets down into here. This is the piece that fits onto the faceplate, like a standard star cap. Just pulls off, and then you just... <clears throat> it just snaps in there. <laughs> we'll come back to that. You've got a thumb screw that attaches to your bracket, and then you've got this weird little gasket thing here. So, those are all the various components that go to your flavor burst. Now let's start connecting everything and looking, from the, looking at the connections that are on the actual tower itself. The one other thing I forgot to mention is the water tank. You'll have one of these on certain models. On certain models you'll have like a, uh, a Tetris shaped block looking container. Uh, this is uh, the other style that they use. And this has got a uh, pump on the top to pressurize it to help force the water through. So, let's take a quick look at our unit. And as you can see, we've got a three-pronged PC-style power cord on there for 110 volt. We've got a weird round connector here. And then we've got a grouping of syrup lines to this special connector. And then we've got a water line that goes to a quarter inch hose. This will plug into your water tank. And we will take care of all that in just a moment here. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the important connection. The syrup fitting. So this whip here 
should have two little prongs on it. This one has been broken. We're going to have to replace this one. But this will seat down into the two notches on this side of the connector. So this weird little round gasket thing here, you can just kind of whip that on like that. And then you slide your connector down and you should feel it dock into that little little slot and then you can just tighten this nut down and then that is the coupling between your machine and your syrup lines that will go into the faceplate there's a magnetic bar that comes with these to help hide and house these lines along the side of the machine I don't have that with me at this exact moment, but we will include that in the order if you order from us. So I'm just going to put these up here for a moment to have them out of the way. So we've got our syrup lines connected. So now we need to look at connecting our electronics. So here. You can see that special plug. That special plug isn't very hard to get into. Just set that there for a moment. So the end of this control cable here, as you can see, it's got a lot of holes in it. What you're going to do is just push that up to it. You're going to feel it kind of dock on, and then you're just going to tighten that. And then there you go, we're all hooked up. All right. So, the other side of this equation, of course, is the power in from the wall. standard extension cord with a three-prong computer power supply cable on it. Side of the control pad here, we we'll have a power switch. Provided we have power and the fuse is good, everything is good, we can flip that switch and that will cut on our system. Position this in such a way you all can see this. Alright, so when you first power on, you'll get the logo. And then on this particular one, it just launches you straight into the flavor select. It's pretty straightforward. So now, we need to prime a bag of syrup so we can have syrup in our line when we have everything connected and we pull that handle so there's no air gaps, there's no blockages, there's no nothing in there. It's just syrup flowing straight in there and there's no delay. So there's a very easy way to do this. And the way that we load the syrup into the machine is by turning this little knob down here. And all that is is a little catch that holds onto a notch. Now, once we've removed that, we'll see all of these numbered bins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And each one of these bins correlates on the screen to a location. So caramel would be here, raspberry would be here, purple grape would be here, mocha cappuccino would be four, so on and so forth. So top left, bottom left, bottom right, top right. Very straightforward. So we're going to take our flavor and put it in slot one. So 
We're going to get our bag of syrup. bag of syrup here and we're just going to kind of weigh it down along that channel and then slide that syrup so it docks down in there so it should be notched down in there like that now we're going to slide this back in and then we're going to take the hose right under it we're going to press this piece in just slightly we're going to put it over it. We're going to give it a little tug make sure it's on there, but not too hard. We don't want to break it. All right, now your syrup bag is on there. Now, we're going to take our flavor hoses here, or a cup or bucket or whatever you've got. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that down into something where it can drip because as we prime it, it's going to be forcing water, air, whatever through the line that was already in there. And then some syrup will start coming out. So we don't want to get syrup everywhere. Of course, getting this thing positioned is a little more difficult than I make it seem. Just because I have a flimsy little cord here. <laughs> All right. So to prime, you hit setup, maintenance. And then, see, prime syrup pump. And then you'll get that same list of flavors that was on the first page. So our first flavor, number one, is caramel. It's not actually what it is in the bag, but we're going to hit that. You should hear this little noise, and you should see that syrup start pulling up into that bag, or the end of that hose. Now, as we watch, we should start to see that flavoring moving down the line here in just a moment. There we go. Oh, do a little loop to loop. All right. And as you can see, we're losing a little bit of water here. That's because the last time we flushed it out, we left water in the line. Getting these things completely empty is a little, a little difficult. But as you can see, we're starting to get some uh, nice raspberry syrup down through there. We don't see any, any air gaps in our line. Everything looks pretty nice and consistent. So I'm gonna hit that same button again on the display to stop the prime. Now this process is the same all the way through. If you had uh, a flavor in number two, you would hit raspberry. If you had one in the bottom right, you'd hit butter pecan. Whatever the flavor is on your screen, this is just a, a, a digital representation of the bags in the unit. So when we're done, we're going to hit done, and now our syrup line is primed. So wonderful. Now, we need to assemble the pieces for the head unit that mix the ice cream with the syrup. So this is our, our base, base cartridge here, as I refer to it. And as you can see on the side, you've got a little notch. This is the side for the motor. This is the side for the ice cream. So, to assemble this properly, you take this little cartridge here, the star on it, and you line the gears up, and you just kind of drop that on down in there. So, it might have been off center with the camera. You can see the little gears on the inside there. You just got to line those up with that. And just kind of push that down in there until it seems like it's nice and flush. So just like that. So now I'm going to have to go back to this and get this, this cap on. This cap has to go on the faceplate of the machine. For the cartridge to dock on. Now this can be a little tricky. These caps can be pretty tight. There we go. It's a lot more difficult than I, I want to make it. All right. So now 
you have this piece here that looks kind of kind of odd you've got a gasket on the bottom you've got two gaskets to go on the inside of the chamber here which may be very hard to see i don't know if that'll show up on camera but there's a smaller one and then a larger one and that's what seals your syrup from dripping out the side there so if you look here you've got these two big notches and this top piece spins so what we're going to do is on here these two little ears that come off we're going to slide up around that get flush and then turn that and now we're on there and we're, we're docked pretty solid so we're good to go there <clears throat> so now we have to look at the orientation of our cartridge <clears throat> Our cartridge, as you can see, has a motor on one side and then a dispenser on the other. So, this cartridge has got a threaded shaft on the bottom, and there's a support bracket that slips over this to hold this up onto this, this uh, stud that comes out of here that this bolt threads onto. So, it'll be hanging kind of like this. So, the bracket itself is very straightforward it's just a loop that fits over and just drops on like that but if you need to switch orientation you may have to undo this knob and flip this over onto the other side or turn the bracket around for it to be able to, to clip onto the correct side so we're gonna run this on our left side today just for simplicity but just keep that in mind, you might have to reorient your bracket depending on the side that you're using. Let's get everything we want. Get it back on there. And you may find that it's easier to reassemble this piece and then do this. It's whatever works best for you, really. So. The hanger bracket may have to adjust the height a little bit. So that bracket's on there, it's securing it. Now, we're going to take our motor. And if you notice, it's got a notch on the side there, a little arrow. So we're going to put that in. And then turn it so those two arrows line up here. And it should be a nice... Nice firm connection in there. That motor is going to be vibrating and, and moving around and humming. So we want to make sure that that's in there nice and secure. Now, at this point, this is when you would install your mounting bracket. This mounting bracket, as I mentioned earlier, does not have the adhesive on the back, so it's not ready to go on. But this mounting bracket would typically go right on the top front of the machine like this. And then you would drop your display on. We're not going to be doing that today for a number of reasons, but that's typically where that would go. We're going to opt to run our machine with the display on top of it like so. Okay. So let's come back a little bit so we can get everything in the picture. Okay. Now, we have our flavor syrup line. The flavor syrup line is going to plug in here and twist. And then that's it. Okay, so your flavor syrup line is in there. And now, we can look at the other two connections on the system. 
we have that weird little two prong cable. That is actually the motor wire, the motor power supply. So I'm going to move this up here just so it'll reach. Okay, so our motor wire is plugged in, so we should have power to our motor. Now we have that headphone jack cable. This headphone jack cable plugs into this little finger switch, just like an iPod or whatever. Actually, I don't even think they have a headphone jacks anymore. Who knows? Okay, and that just plugs right on in there. And now you've got this neat little finger trigger. So what we're going to do, you can see how this works. It just slides on over that. I think I'm having as many problems as I am because I'm trying to do this one handed, but. There we go. Now it just slides onto the handle like that. You can hear how it clicks when you pull it. All right. So let me adjust my tripod up. machine is making ice cream. We know that that's good. We've primed our syrup line. Our assembly is put together. We need to make a selection on the screen for the flavor and then pull the handle and hit the trigger to dispense the ice cream. So let's go ahead and make our selection, which is flavor one. Everything's hooked up. Everything looks secure. So I am going to pull this handle while hitting this button. I'm gone. <laughs> now you can see how much syrup came out on that. It's a little bit a little bit more than we really want on our product, especially for a red, it's just gonna look kinda, kinda wrong. So what we're going to do is go into our setup. We're going to go to maintenance and adjust dispenser rate. And caramel is set to seven. Seven's really high. I think we could probably get away with the two. Two should be more than enough, especially for a flavor as uh, uh, noticeable as red. All right. This is the way people typically prefer this. I just had both hands going. So we're gonna make our flavor selection. And move this up so it doesn't fall on us. Here's something done apparently. And if you make a selection and walk away after about 15 seconds, it'll clear itself. So let's try this again. Now that is much better. You can see how it's got a nice even coloring, but it's not dripping down and all, all super saturated and just runny and, and messy. So we could probably take that down as far as a one and that would be fine. Now, 
let's talk about your water tank because we didn't hook that up earlier this this unit here uses this particular style of water tank and as you can see it's got a pump on it now we've got nothing hooked up here so it's just pumping water out the side so what we're going to do is come back here and we're going to plug our quarter inch line from the back of the machine into that fitting and we're going to push it in nice and tight and then we're going to give this about 10 pumps. Let's make sure that needs to be tightened down too. And you might have a little bit of air escape around the seam on the bottle. These aren't super tight. And that's okay. So now that we've got our water connected, and it's all primed up, we can go and utilize the injector flush setting. So the injector flush, say if you have somebody coming in, uh, you've got three customers, one wants a, a red cone, one wants a green, and one wants a blue. They're, the first cone that comes out is gonna be red, that's gonna be fine, but as soon as you pull that green cone, it's gonna be brown at the base, it's gonna look nasty. You don't want that. So the way that you prevent that from happening is you hit this injector flush button. Now you wanna make sure you have a cup or something under there to catch this. We've got a little drip tray, so we're just gonna kinda of roll with it. But if you hit injector flush, that's what you get. You get a nice stream of water through there. It pushes out the rest of the ice cream. Now when you go to press, you know, to pull your next cone, you don't get over bleed, you don't get any crossover, everything is just nice and consistent the way that you want it. So utilize that injector flush, uh, anytime that you're changing colors, anything like that. Uh, and also keep in mind that you can end up with color bleed by selecting two different colors on here. Like if you're doing a red to green, sometimes you'll get a red, it'll go to yellow, and then it'll go to green or, or vice versa. So you gotta remember your primary colors and color bleed there. But that injector flush will, will save you a lot of hassle there. And it's something I recommend doing periodically through the day so you don't get to build up a syrup in those holes. The holes in this little silver piece here are extremely small and they do get clogged with dairy and other things. So that's something to just keep in mind. Good injector flush is, you know, definitely will save you some time down the road. So, We've had a successful day of selling ice cream cones. Our flavor burst has been a wonderful addition. We're closing down for the night. So what do we do? Well, you don't wanna leave syrup in these lines overnight. You wanna clean them out very, very often. If syrup sits in there and gets too old, you'll end up with a, basically what, what amounts to gummy bears and it becomes very tedious to clean out. So I recommend rinsing uh, your lines uh, every time that you're going to put the machine away for an extended period of time. Um, and, and really, it, it couldn't hurt to just clean it every, every day if you wanted to. It's, it's a very straightforward process. Um, you don't have to sit on top of it either, thankfully. So what we've got is down in the machine here, and it'll typically be tucked down here in the back. You're going to have these these fittings here and they'll be looped into one another and you'll be like why why is it doing that well that's that's the water line for your injector flush so what we do to clean out the lines we go to setup we go to maintenance and we go to water syrup flush and then we, again we get the same matrix of colors representing our syrup bags by location and machine and then what we do we disconnect the syrup line from the bag. We disconnect this water line, take this male, and we connect it up here to the syrup. Okay. Now, we're going to take this, we're going to twist it gently, and we're going to pull that out. So we've got our flavor dispenser head, and we're just going to hang it over a bucket of ice cream here. Some some empty bucket that's not gonna create problems for us. Okay. Now we're going to do caramel. 
we're going to hit start. No. Hey everybody, sorry about that. We had to take a pause from our original videos. We ran into a little bit of a snag. But we're back here on the water syrup flush screen here, as you can see. And we have our first flavor, which is the bag that we have primed. We're gonna select that. Now we should be taken into the screen that'll have a little bit of information on it and a start stop. We're going to hit start. And then our pump should start running and we should be able to see water flowing up into this hose, which you may need to massage just a little bit if there's any residual syrup in there to help break that up. You'll see that wine slowly start to change in color as it becomes lighter. And you'll see that we're flushing our line out with nice clear water. It'll, it'll be pink for a little bit. It's gonna take probably upwards of five to 15 minutes for the system to flush this line completely. You can see how clear it is already but there is a little bit of residual syrup in there, so to get all that extra coloring and syrup out of there, we're gonna let that run. Okay, so let's say you wanna change the flavors that are available on your menu, and you know, you just wanna have exactly what you have in the machine listed on the screen. So what we're gonna do is go back to our maintenance screen, and then we're gonna do menu, select, menu setup. So pump one is caramel. We wanna change that over to raspberry. So we're just gonna use these. And we're just gonna move this over until we find our flavor. Okay, once we find our flavor, select done. And then on the main screen, you'll see that we have raspberry available. Now, if, you're st if your beginning screen is a little different like this one, you're going to press in the top left corner to get into your setup and maintenance menu, even though that there's no icon there. So if we needed to adjust another flavor, we would use the top carrot here and move through until we had a so the correct pump number, which of course starts at the top left and moves to the top right and then down to the left and over to the right. So if we wanted to set number four to, let's say, blue raspberry, we just hit done, and now it shows up on our screen. So just remember, we're gonna hand wash all of these components in our three compartment sink. We're not going to wash our motor. We can wipe that down, but we don't wanna submerge it. We're going to remove this cap, which may require a flathead screwdriver, a little bit of force to pop it off, but we want to make sure that we clean and sanitize those per your health department codes. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, I, I figure it's worth mentioning. Uh, if you ever have any problems with the syrup flush system, if that doesn't, if you don't hear that, that kick on and that starts running for you, you can also go back here and go into the prime syrup pump and you could use that in place of the water syrup flush. Now you're gonna hook up your water line to the bag and move it over each time that you change your flavor. So if we wanted to do pump two, we'd have to disconnect this and connect it to pump two line. So if your flush menu starts giving you some, some weirdness, you can always just prime it with water and it'll accomplish the same thing. So it's just something to keep in mind. These displays can get a little buggy over time. Um, things can happen. So just something to consider. Anyhow, I think I've covered about everything. Uh, we showed you how to assemble, prime, use, clean out, and dismantle the system. So I think we've covered everything. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments or you know, anything you want to talk about, just leave us a comment or send us an email. We're, we're always here and we'd love to hear from you all. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.